So this lesson is to explain the interrelation between natural disaster, development and vulnerabilities. It is evident that disasters have a severe impact on life, property and livelihoods and all walks of human life. Thus, it is imperative to get an understanding of the interconnection between disasters, development and vulnerability. In the first section, the lesson covers information of disaster and its impact on growth. The second part of the lesson includes the effects of a disaster on vulnerable groups. Objectives of this lesson is to explain the three concepts, disasters, development and vulnerability. Two, examine the relationship between disasters, development and vulnerability. Three, understanding the impacts of disaster on the vulnerable groups concept and meaning. Development is a broad economic, social and political process that aims at the constant improvement of the well-being of the population and all individuals by their active, free and meaningful participation in development. Development in broad, general terms means a positive change. Robert Chambers in 1997 presented five critical words in characterizing the event. Well-being, livelihoods, capability, equity and sustainability. Suggesting that each term is linked with the others. The goal of development is socio-economic sustainability and also its focus on vulnerable and risk reduction. Both are interlinked. Disaster is defined as a massive event that destroys all spheres of the affected community in the long run. A catastrophe that frequently wipes out years of development initiatives and sets back the course of improvement in developing countries and poor countries, putting them further behind. Along with the diversion and wastage of precious resources, disasters and development, the relationship. Disasters and development are closely linked and the disasters can destroy the development initiatives and create development opportunities and that expansion scheme can both increase and decrease vulnerability. In the development context, it is the social, cultural, economic and political environment that makes people vulnerable to shocks, diseases or any negative force. Class, caste, ethnicity, gender, disability and HR, age are other issues affecting people's vulnerability. Over the past decades, some disciplines including international development, disaster risk analysis, macroeconomics and public policy have asked whether disasters are the problem of or for development. This debate on natural disasters and development Connection is still at the fore of global discussions as prospective risks from climate extremes and uncertainty increasingly poses a peril to our development prospects. The theoretical and qualitative understanding that development dynamics drive disaster risks and disaster risk may constrain development opportunities is now widely accepted. However, Quantitative evidence regarding these complex interactions remains challenged. For example, some recent publications still ask natural disasters have positive consequences or are disasters good for economic growth and does development reduce fatalities from natural disasters. The following key points are most important while discussing disaster and development linkages. Disasters hamper development. Disasters can directly disturb the development of the region which leads to financial debt, economic crisis, employment related crisis, investment and related fields. Disaster increasing vulnerability. The vulnerability of disaster effect population increases due to the effect of natural calamities. Studies say that Disaster can cause multiple issues in the area of health, social relationships, familial issues, mental health related issues, etc. 
Disaster reduces vulnerability. The reduction of weakness is the most crucial aspect of disaster risk reduction programs. In many emergencies, interventions could provide help to the weaker sections of society by helping in getting relief from the calamities. By providing necessary support like food, water, clothing, financial assistance and medical help. Disaster increases opportunities for change. After any disaster, many international organizations and national level voluntary organizations work for the development of disaster affected places by establishing social development centers, providing educational assistance like tuition services for children, institutional recreational centers or child friendly spaces for children, women and self-help groups for economic activities, microfinance and livelihood programs, health facilities, construction of community hall, construction of disaster resistant building, cottages or shelters in the community for risk reduction. The long term investment like capacity development and skill building exercises for various target groups organized by the voluntary organizations will help the community increase their knowledge about the disasters and they can prevent and reduce the causalities if another disaster strikes in the future. The table indicates four domains or themes which underline development and vulnerability relationships in connection with the natural calamities. So what you see on your screen is a diagram depicting the development realm, the negative realm, the positive realm and disaster realm. As we can see, development can increase vulnerability. Development can reduce vulnerability. Disasters can set back development and disasters can provide development opportunities. Development programs can increase an area's vulnerability to disasters. Many buildings, including the hospital building at Bhuj, collapsed during the 2001 earthquake because they did not adhere to the building code in high risk earthquake prone areas. Development programs can be designed to decrease the susceptibility to disasters and their harmful consequences. For example, housing projects constructed under building codes designed to withstand high winds and flooding would result in less destruction during the next tropical storm or flood. Disasters can curb development. It takes minutes for a disaster to wash away buildings, canals, dams, etc. This can disturb the development process and the rebuilding of these structures would probably take many years. So any catastrophe can directly pull back the development of the effective place, community and resources. Rebuilding after a disaster provides significant opportunities to initiate development programs. A self-help housing program to rebuild housing destroyed by an earthquake teaches new skills, strengthens community's pride and leadership and retains development resources that are otherwise given to construction companies. Disaster and development are both timely and important uh, reminding us that the links between development, disaster and survival is to recognize the challenge that lie ahead for the developed and developing world. The following details provide a clear understanding of the positive and negative aspects of disasters towards the development process. Let us look at the negative aspects of disaster development process. Disasters limit economic development. Disasters wipe out the gains of economic development. Catastrophic disasters destroy a nation's assets and interrupts production, trade investment and other economic engines. Disasters set back development programming, undoing years of development initiatives. For example, infrastructure improvements such as transport and utility systems are destroyed by a flood. Development programs can increase an area's vulnerability to disasters. Many buildings, including the hospital building at Butch, collapsed during the 2001 earthquake because they did not adhere to the building code in high-risk earthquake-prone zones. 
Disasters can severely disrupt development initiatives in several ways, including loss of resources, interruption of various development programs, impact on the investment climate, impact on the non-formal sector, political destabilization. Disasters limit social development. The loss of these social assets due to an emergency or any other event ultimately results in the magnification of vulnerabilities. Disaster events destroy gains in the health, sanitation, drinking water, housing and education sectors that have underpinned social development. Odisha cyclone in 1999 led to the contamination of drinking water wells and damaged many schools in the impacted area. Disasters often result from unresolved problems, environmental degradation, uncontrolled urban growth, population growth, increasing levels of poverty and political and institution gaps. Now let us look at the positive aspects of disaster towards the development process. Disasters improve economic development. In the aftermath of an emergency, when recovery begins, economic growth moves ahead at full speed. Rebuilding after disaster provides significant opportunities to initiate development programs. A self-help housing program to rebuild housing destroyed by an earthquake teaches new skills, strengthens community pride and leadership and retains development resources. Development programs can be designed to decrease the susceptibility to disasters and their harmful consequences. For example, housing projects constructed under building codes designed to withstand high winds and flooding will result in less destruction during the next tropical storm or flood. Disasters can help to mobilize resources from multiple corners in the country and international level. It also helps to mobilize resources in the village itself. Social relationships and networking will improve after the disaster situation can increase social protection and social security to the survivors of disasters. Development practices enable people to improve their living situation. Improved health and education, for example, can help reduce vulnerability and can limit human losses in a disaster by increasing the likelihood that people can help themselves to recover or find the resources to do so when an emergency occurs. Disasters often provide opportunities for development, improve atmosphere in favor of change, establish development programs, job training, construction and land reform. Vulnerability. Vulnerability gives the extent to which a community is affected by a disaster. Weakness is the inability to resist a hazard or to respond when an accident has occurred. For instance, people who live on planes are more vulnerable to floods than people who live higher up. Social vulnerability refers to the inability of people, organizations and societies to withstand adverse impacts from multiple stressors to which they are exposed. These impacts are due in part to characteristics inherent in social interactions, institutions and systems of cultural values. Vulnerability describes the characteristics and circumstances of a community, system or asset that makes it susceptible to the damaging effects of a hazard. There are many aspects of vulnerability arising from various physical, social, economic and environmental factors. Social vulnerability refers to the resilience of communities when confronted by external stresses on human health, stresses such as natural or human caused disasters or disease outbreaks. Reducing social vulnerability can decrease both human suffering and economic loss. Poor relief and rehabilitation management responses lead to negative impact and even increase susceptibility to future hazards. Disaster development linkages, most visible demonstrated in the livelihood analysis of people who live with various risks. The livelihood of the weaker sections of the society can be more vulnerable to the disaster. The objective of any interventions before, during and after the emergency is to reduce the vulnerability of people and strengthen their capacity and to work on social structure that make people vulnerable. Ultimately, 
the objective of development and disaster management needs to be the same reducing socio-economic vulnerability. It should be taken care of by the government, people and other stakeholders. Vulnerable groups should get appropriate space to get rid of the problems during and after the disaster. They should be considered well to avoid further consequences due to natural calamity. Mental health issues among vulnerable populations, either major or minor, should address systemically and timely. It can prevent relapse and other conditions. Impact of disaster on vulnerable groups. Vulnerable populations require particular attention in a disaster. During disasters, communities with higher levels of social vulnerability are most likely to be adversely affected. In emergency preparedness, a significant goal is to able to reach every person in a community. The vulnerable groups are children, pregnant women, differently abled, elderly people, malnourished people and people who are ill are particularly vulnerable when disasters strike and take a relatively high share of the disease burden associated with emergencies. The economic, social and psychological issues are predominantly high among the vulnerable population and such issues are increased due to disaster situations. Financial crisis, debt, issues of repayment of the loan or any lack of proper employment or less income can be increased during the time of disasters. Physical health issues related to a type of catastrophe can be seen among the vulnerable population. In an instance, body ache, orthopedic problems, fever, uncontrolled physical strain due to meeting the encounters of an earthquake disaster. Recurring floods can cause waterborne diseases and many other communicable disease along with physical health issues. The social impact consists of less support from other stakeholders, minimum networking initiatives, absence of proper communication with other populations, less social interaction can also be seen during and after disasters. The psychological issues are predominantly high in vulnerable groups in a disaster affected environment. Children, women, older adults need additional emotional care that can be helpful in speedy recovery from emergency situations. The emotional issues related to disasters on differently able groups are same as that of others. So disaster interventions should adequately address the concerns and needs of the vulnerable group that can help them with the mechanisms for recovery from natural calamities and ensure their health and social well-being. The role of multiple stakeholders in a reduction of vulnerability. There are many actors in the management of natural disasters, connecting to disaster and development initiatives, delivering disaster relief activities, coordinating an umbrella of services towards attaining disaster recovery in the affected places with the involvement of various individual groups and communities. Role of local self-governments, community international NGOs, NGOs, community-based organizations. In disaster context, the engagement of multiple stakeholders is of paramount significance. There are many key persons or groups that play major roles in the disaster management process. These include communities, particularly the most vulnerable, local governments, national governments, regional institutions, NGOs, corporations, media and scientific communities. Communities, particularly the most vulnerable, are the critical stakeholders in disaster management. These are most vital to people-centered early warning systems. Their input into a system design and the ability to respond ultimately determines the extent of risk associated with natural hazards. Critical issues in context with the communities are as follows. The vulnerable population needs to be aware of the hazards and potential adverse impacts to which they are exposed 
and be able to take specific actions to minimize the threat, loss or damage. The essential determinant of the selection of disasters on which system should focus is geographical location of such communities. For example, while the coastal communities need to be educated and prepared for the possibility of a tsunami, a population in the hilly areas can be trained to respond to an early warning system for landslides and earthquakes. Local self-government. The local self-governments need to have considerable knowledge of hazards to which their community exposed. Thus, the local governments must be actively involved in the design and maintenance of early warning systems. It should also have the capacity to instruct or engage the local population in a manner that increases their safety and reduce the potential loss of resources on which the community depends. National Government The national government is responsible for policies and frameworks that facilitate early warning. They are also responsible for the technical systems necessary for the preparation and issuance of timely and effective hazard warnings for their respective countries. The critical issues with the national governments are the federal government should ensure that signs and related responses can be directed towards the most vulnerable population through the design of holistic disaster response and early warning frameworks that address the specific needs of the related micro and macro level actors. The provision of support to local communities and local governments to develop operational capabilities is an essential function to translate early warning knowledge into risk reduction practices. Regional institutions and organizations. These should provide specialized knowledge and advice in support of national efforts to develop or sustain the operational capabilities of countries that share a familiar geographical environment. International bodies should provide support for national early warning activities and foster the exchange of data and knowledge between individual countries. Support may include the provision of advisory information, technical assistance and policy and organizational support necessary to ensure the development and operational capabilities of national authorities or agencies responsible for early warning practice. Non-government organizations play a critical role in raising awareness among individuals and organizations involved in early warning and the implementation of old warning systems, particularly at the community level. Also, they play an essential advocacy role to help ensure that early warning signs are given. The private sector has a diverse role to play in early giving warning, including developing rapid warning capabilities in their organizations. The private sector is also essential as they are usually better equipped to implement ICT-based solutions. The private sector has a tremendous untapped potential to help provide skilled services in the form of technical workforce, know-how or donations of goods or services, especially for the communication, dissemination and response elements of early warning. Media and related groups. The media play an essential role in improving the disaster consciousness of the general population and in disseminating early warnings. The media can be the critical link between the agency providing the signal and general public. The scientific community has a critical role in providing specialized scientific and technical input to assist governments and communities in developing early warning systems. Their expertise is crucial in analyzing the risks that communities face from natural hazards, supporting the designs of scientific and systemic monitoring and warning services, fostering data exchange, translating scientific or technical information into messages and disseminating understandable warnings to those at risk. To conclude, what we learn is the relationship between disasters, 
development and vulnerability is of paramount importance. And the learners should understand that the catastrophes and how it affects the process of evolution or not. The lesson gives a clear picture of the various relations of natural disaster on the positive and negative aspects related to development. The government and other stakeholders can think about the possibilities of allocation of resources for the effective management of disasters with the help of community, other stakeholders and with the support of emergency policies and programs.